Hi, everyone. Welcome again to another uh, rant. I've got a special guest here direct from CMHC, Robert Taylor, account manager. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for joining us today. How's it going? Uh, very well. Here you go. Uh, pleasure to be here. Looking forward to chatting with you. Yeah, thanks for. I, I'm sure you've done a lot of these. You know, what's what's your life been like in the last 12 months with all these uh, these sort of video calls and all these things? You know, do you find it uh, a little bit annoying? Are you getting used to it, or do you kind of prefer this over the one-on-one -on -one interactions? Uh, <clears throat> I, I do. I'll be honest. I do miss the one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions face to face. There, there is a there is some part of me that misses that. Uh, I, I think the interesting thing is is that you know we at CMC had already started this process uh, um, a couple of years before the pandemic started. So um, it was an easy transition for us into this uh, work from home and and a virtual environment. But uh, yeah. it's definitely you know getting out and seeing people in person and. And it's definitely something I miss. But you know, you know what's nice. Um, a day in the life of myself is is uh, purely, you know, webinars, one-on-one, uh, -on -one virtual meetings like this one, <laughs> um, on a regular basis. So, the, the um, I guess the nice thing about these video calls is you can kind of just get them sort of done back to back if you want to. You don't have to deal with commuting or parking or try to figure out where you got to go to. Uh, so there is that value, but. You know, I feel like that sometimes just adds a lot more to our plates. You're doing a lot. I find myself doing way more meetings now because I can. And, you know, it can be a little bit uh, fatiguing. But I definitely miss just seeing people, you know, like that are within six feet of me. Um, but you guys, I mean, the whole real estate market's been pretty busy. And this is kind of why I was pretty excited to have you on. You know, we've seen some record numbers across most markets in Canada. I know that on the lending side, lenders are very busy. The appraisers are very busy. Lawyers are extremely busy. Um, you know, what are you seeing on your end you know, in terms of applications being received and processing times and those sort of things? Um, well, from the the aspect of applications uh, and processing time, we I think um, uh, I think like the other insurers, uh, we we have seen some some decline. Uh, maybe not declines, were not the right word, but maybe. Uh, uh, a smaller amount of applications coming in, and I think that's partly because of uh, the refinancing that's occurring. Um, you know, people are are selling and either and moving to new homes, uh, larger homes, uh, so there's down payments readily available in their in their uh, uh, their existing homes, so they're going conventional uh, per se. So, from a first time home buyer perspective, uh, yeah, there's been some some downward trend. Um, it's uh, it's I guess in part and parcel. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in the market. So um, we just released uh, some some great information in our housing market outlook uh, this this past few weeks. So um, you know what we're seeing is uh, definitely a, a, an uneven distribution in, in related to related to the economic impacts uh, uh, from COVID-19. Um, but it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely affecting the first-time homebuyer sector for sure, and, and the applications that we're receiving there um, in the in the hot housing market that exists basically across Canada. It's yeah, it's it's definitely been pretty uh, pretty impressive. I mean, um, with with the new you know tentative rule change for June, I mean there is going to be uh, an increase to the stress test. It looks like um, you know we've looked at that, and it seems to impact between four to five percent of your total borrowing power. Um, you know, I personally think it's a good sign. I think it sort of sends a message to the market that, you know, we're trying to sort of cool things down a little bit. I think the actual impact is pretty minor. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that sort of policy uh, change in terms of, you know, the applications they'll be receiving and, and, and any sort of mitigation of risk for your end? Um, well, uh, as we set out a few years ago, um, you know, we have a we have an aspiration that everyone in Canada has a home that they can afford and that meets their needs by 2030. Yeah. Um, and affordability obviously is a very important factor. So anything that, uh, you know, ensures that houses remain affordable, people don't overspend, don't get them into homes themselves into situations or homes that uh, they can't afford is pretty important to us. Um, uh, as, as a, Government uh, Crown Corporation, you know, we're we're focused on ensuring that uh, affordability is first and foremost, and and when we say meets the needs 
So, you know, we don't look to exceed the, the needs of people that are buying homes, right? So those that we help with our with our products, our mortgage loan insurance products and stuff like that, um, it's about ensuring that uh, they're not exceeding what they what they need. So getting them into homes, getting them into a home that meets their needs is absolutely uh, about most important. So with this change coming uh, on the conventional side, I think uh, I think it's going to help uh, ensure that affordability is something that can be achieved um, in the future. I mean, you guys have some pretty interesting and unique programs, um, you know, just for the sake of time. I'm curious about, you know, for example, your self-employed program. You know, the reality is we've got a lot of self-employed Canadians. Um, and I imagine in COVID, a lot of new people have become self-employed and have decided that, you know, they're, they're going to go into a completely different direction. Um, but you do have some interesting programs to help people that traditionally would not get financing, get it through your self-employed program. Do you want to sort of touch on some of the highlights of that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we do have a self-employed program. Um, it is, you know, there is, uh, you know, roughly 2.7, maybe 2.8 million people who are self-employed in Canada of, of those who are employed. Uh, that's 15% of, of those who are employed in, in Canada. So it's a large portion of our population. And, um, you know, we have a self-employed program that uh, typically, we like to see a couple years, 24 months of business. Uh, however, um, we did make some enhancements uh, a while back to that program for those that uh, perhaps have less than 24 months. Yeah. Um, for example, uh, maybe perhaps they acquired a business. Maybe, maybe they were working in the field of work and decided to go out on their own and, and acquired a business or, um, you know, or, or starting fresh, but uh, at least they have some previous employment uh in that field yeah. um, and then we look at uh, certain things uh, for eligibility um, with less than 24 months like sufficient cash reserves or predictable earnings or uh, like I mentioned previous training or education or in that line of work um, even the, the demonstration of managing credit so credit scores obviously would come into play there um, and then some documentation that we, we um, allow versus some traditional, like your notice of assessment or T1 generals and stuff like that would be perhaps previous employment uh, documentation on that type of income. Account statements, uh, obviously business documentation is important. Uh, perhaps there's some signed contracts that are going to carry forward income. So, so there's some enhancements that have been done to our self-employed program that uh, that you know is designed to help those who are self-employed get into home ownership and, and obviously a home that meets their needs and that, that's affordable for them. I mean, I look at it as like almost like a common sense lending program where traditionally the banks, uh, you know, the rules that they're using are they're looking at your two-year history and whatever you've reported to the CRA is how they'll determine what kind of finance you get. And I, I would imagine that a lot of people in COVID that may have lost their jobs or are no longer, you know, working full time and salary may have sort of shifted in that exact same industry to maybe a consultant type role or something where they're now self-employed. And this is kind of an amazing program uh, to get them into home ownership. And as they build up that income reserve, you know, later on down the road, if they need to make changes, can get into you know regular bank lending. So it's certainly a, a program that we're seeing a lot more of. Um, the other one that I was curious about was uh, construction and any sort of improvement loan. So I, I find that with how mad the market is these days in terms of actually trying to close on a property, I think a lot of people are looking at properties that maybe don't meet all their needs and they are going to need some uh, construction or renovation. And, you know, you guys do offer a program like that that could help you get in the market you know, without having to deal with all these sort of crazy competing bids, or maybe to a lesser extent, and then maybe look at getting some financing help with your rentals. You know, if you want to speak on any points there as well on that program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, our improvement for, for uh, purchase or new construction program. And uh, at 95% for one to two units, um, owner occupied, of course. Yeah. Uh, we also uh, can go 90 90% uh, financing on uh, three and four units. So if somebody was looking to get into an owner occupied with some rentals, that's an option as well. Um, and, and what it's designed to do. So uh, you feel the questions a lot of the time, um, and, and especially in today's markets across Canada, uh, housing obviously is getting uh, pricey. Uh, prices have been rising. And um, there's always something that somebody's going to want to do for their home. You know, maybe uh, 
maybe the roof's got to be done. Maybe the furnace needs to be changed or a new air conditioner or, or maybe uh, update that bathroom or kitchen. Um, I, I, uh, I always refer to, you know, the property brother, uh, you know, kitchens or bathrooms that people want to see when they, you know, when they have their new home and they're showing it off. So, um, and, and what it's designed is, uh, you know, do you wait until you have the funds, you've saved the funds, or maybe the equity is built up in the house, um, or could you f finance it now and facilitate that that improvement now? Um, and, you know, for a slight perhaps increase in mortgage payment over the time, maybe a slightly larger down payment, um, perhaps that, you know, kitchen rental for 25000 or thirty or depending on how expensive you want to go um, perhaps maybe you could be done today versus waiting a um, couple things to note you know it's for these types of uh, improvements and even new construction um, if it's less than 10 percent um, as the improved value as we call it it can be done as a single advance so the work can be done and, and done as a single advance um, but there are larger uh, large scale improvements so I've, uh, you know, in a past life, uh, facilitated one that was a full-on addition to a home. Um, it was well in excess of $100,000, and and uh, it was a it was a full service uh, done with uh, with CMHC um, for progress advances and so on and so forth. So there's a couple of options. Um, we use as uh, the uh, as improved value, which is is as improved so that could you know be a rip, an appraisal that determines that or it's the as is value plus the uh plus the cost of improvement so whichever is the lesser of those two um but what it does is it gives people option um and, and you know if they want something done immediately or something needs to be done it can you know perhaps be done now versus waiting um well it, it's also easier especially when you're potentially putting five ten percent down uh, you know, having to finance, you know, you've just purchased a home, maybe your first home. By the time you moved in, you potentially exhausted a lot of your capital and a $25,000 project, 50 or, or more, is not something that you might be able to do immediately. And I think with rates being so low, this is a, a great way to possibly buy a property that's slightly under market, potentially, needs little work, but now you've improved the value. You've actually been able to hopefully put a lot of equity in, in, in growth into that. So I think it's a great way. Plus you can customize it. I mean, I don't want a lot of yes. these, uh, these markets. A lot of these properties are not brand new, ready to go. Some of them need some work. So uh, I think it's an interesting program. I mean, this is all great stuff. I mean, what are your thoughts? You know, just to sort of add on an ending note, I mean, we're not, I can't predict the future, but you know, what are your general thoughts and uh, you know, what are you seeing for the second half of the year in terms of real estate growth or any, and any, anything like that that you'd want to touch on about you? Uh, well, uh, obviously we've been seeing, um, you know, prices are increasing because sales there's, you know, are out, out pacing listings, right? So yeah. Um, and that's part and parcel because of the whole, uh, you know, the pre-pandemic situation where people were migrating out of the major urban centers to, uh, you know, suburban or even rural in some cases. Um, and, uh, you know, that's likely to continue um, as people are reevaluating their situations at home. Uh, they're still looking for larger homes, perhaps to, to facilitate their, their children, you know, school, homeschooling. Uh, I know I, in my situation, I've got two people working from home, um, uh, children watching movies. So, the, yeah, it, it, you, they're looking for a larger home. So that that we we definitely will see, uh, probably see continue for, for at least the next little while. Um, the couple of highlights that I think that are coming, uh, you know, employ, employment conditions, obviously, as the, we get out of uh, the pandemic, as we slowly move and, and vaccinations happen and occur, employment's probably going to uh, improve and continue to improve, likely will remain um, below pre-COVID levels in the short term. Um, uh, in our in our outlook, uh, housing outlook, you know, GDP growth, we expect it to rebound this year. Uh, from from where it was last year and uh won't fully recover though by the end of this year uh, we suspect um but from an optimistic uh standpoint uh possibility of a stronger recovery next year um as you know employment obviously improves and, and gets closer to pre-covid levels uh with mortgage rates 
expected to slightly increase, but not, you know, um, not to historical standard uh, say increases. Uh, they, we are expecting them to remain very low, but we are seeing them uh, on the rise. We're already seeing it happening now. Um, one thing that the pandemic ha has caused uh, is the savings rate to increase, which is uh, interesting um, as people don't have anywhere to go to spend money. <laughs> um, but uh, that's likely to fall uh, this year into next year as uh, as we get out and you know, we do things and spend money. Um, so that uh, that's one thing that we'll see. Um, there has been, you know, that my, I mentioned the migration. There has been an actual migration towards, uh, say, the Atlantic provinces, where they haven't seen as high numbers in uh, in COVID-19, um, and and, uh, and we're seeing some strong interprovincial migration. I guess you could you could say uh, that's likely to continue. Um, what else can I tell you? The There's people. I have I have clients. I think that interesting. So I have a client that has sold all her assets except for one property i think and she's just traveling north america um in a van or an rv i think it's an rv and her husband uh is still working regular salary type job and he'll be able to work throughout this whole i think two-year experience that is what i'm calling it and i just think it's so cool that you know despite all the negative things that COVID has done around the world there is, you know, some positive, interesting stories that I've come across with people leaving jobs they, they weren't necessarily happy with and getting into stuff that they actually were almost forced into by default. And, you know, think it's something that they probably wouldn't have done without that sort of push of COVID. And someone like this who's told me it was always her dream to travel around Canada and the U.S. And this is an amazing way for them to continue to earn income without having to go to an office and do all this. So I think, you know, there's certainly some positive things coming out of uh you know 2021 that i hope to get better for the second half of the year so um, i'm optimistic but um but yeah robert thanks for spending some time sharing some insights um you know i wish you uh, an amazing uh, summer the, the weather's finally getting better because i'm based out of toronto it's looking pretty sun pretty sunny in the next uh, little while so i wish you all the best and uh yeah thanks again for your time you're welcome yeah I'm not far from you. I'm in the Niagara region, so I'm. Uh... Yeah, we're, finally, we're finally getting, we're finally getting down to the uh, the, the double digits. The, so it, it's it's looking pretty good, uh, especially with the craziness we've had to deal with in the last year or so. So I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, all the best. Um, you and, well. for your time today. Uh, thanks for having me. Go, yeah, thanks.